Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you an unsinkable metal. Okay, so I have here two pieces of aluminum sandwiched together by an adhesive in the middle. And the gap is about the same between them. The only difference between these two is I've treated this one with a super hydrophobic paint. And this one I didn't treat at all. So now let's see what happens when I put both of these on water. Okay, so first we have our boat made of aluminum that's not been treated. So you can see it still floats. And then we have our boat that has been treated, both made of aluminum, about the same size, same weight. But now watch what happens when we sink our boat that hasn't been treated. It's gone. <laughs> but now watch what happens when we try to sink our aluminum boat that has been treated. It just pops back up. So no matter what I do to try to keep it down, it just pops right back up. It's completely unsinkable. So you can see why it's floating. Look right in the middle of it, and you can see that there's a layer of air in between there. There's a trapped air bubble that can't get out. So even if I dip it in to, and turn it completely sideways, it still floats back up. Now hydrophobic means that it repels water, but what it means more than that is that it actually attracts air. So you see that shine there? That's the layer of air in between the water. So air wants to stay attached to the surface layer of this aluminum now, more than water does. And so what that means is that there's always going to be a very thin layer of air around the aluminum. And if you make a tiny little gap like this, it can actually trap more air due to the surface tension of water. So basically you can make a giant bubble that stays there no matter what. In fact, let's say we have some giant holes poked in our ship. Let's see if it still floats after that. So now let's pierce some giant holes in our ship. <laughs> okay, so we definitely have some holes in our ship. Now let's see if it sinks. <laughs> it doesn't even affect it whatsoever. So it doesn't matter whether we poked holes in it or not the air bubbles still stay in there. Now a traditional flotation device keeps some compartment of air enclosed due to not having any holes in it. And as soon as it gets a hole in it, then the water leaks in, the air leaks out, and it's no longer buoyant. But with this material, the surface tension of the water and the hydrophobicity of the material itself is what keeps the bubble there. And so you can't get rid of it. You can't pop the air bubble. And so the air bubble can never leak out. And so it always stays buoyant. So you could actually make flotation devices out of this that can't be sunk no matter what. Now the way I made my unsinkable metal is by spraying a hydrophobic material on it. Now over time that material could wear off so it could eventually become sinkable. But what researchers have been working on is actually etching into the surface of metal little tiny grooves. And those little tiny grooves are so small that they actually act as though it's a hydrophobic surface. And so it traps air on there and it's even more super hydrophobic than what I've sprayed on here. And it can't be washed off. And so you truly can have an unsinkable device. Now the idea to make materials like this actually came from insects. Insects like fire ants can actually make huge rafts due to the hydrophobicity of their bodies and they can actually stay afloat in water. And diving bell spiders can actually keep a tiny pocket of air with them when they go down because their body's hydrophobic. And so scientists began to think, well, if we could make a material that's super hydrophobic, then it, we can keep a bubble that stays stuck to that material no matter what. Now what's really interesting about this is that when we think of something that's hydrophobic, we often think of water being repelled from it. But the only reason it's repelled from it is because that surface is not attracted to water, but it's more attracted to air. But if you can force that air to be removed, then the water will still stick to the hydrophobic surface. You can see I showed this with magic sand, which is hydrophobic in water normally, but then turn on the vacuum chamber, suck out all the air from it, and it's no longer magic sand, it's just normal sand. 
Okay, here we go. <laughs> it crumbles apart. And we could actually show this as well with my unsinkable metal. I can actually make it sinkable by sticking it in the vacuum chamber. Let's see if it works. Okay, so first I need to submerge it under the water for this to work. So it has to say submerged during this experiment. Then turn on my vacuum chamber. You can see it actually sucking the air out of it. Now it's going to eventually suck the air out so much that that will no longer be a hydrophobic material. Okay, we're at a full vacuum now. It's getting rid of a lot of that dissolved air in there. Okay, now let's let the air back in. Three, two, one. Okay. Got a little foggy. Okay, now let's see if it actually floats. <laughs> nope, it sunk. So again, the reason it sunk is because the vacuum chamber was one of the only mechanisms in which we could remove that air that was trapped on the hydrophobic surface. But then once I get the water off of it and can expose it to air again, then it'll float and stay that way. So there you go. You can use this unsinkable metal to make flotation devices that can't be sunk. Unless, of course, your flotation device is floating in a vacuum chamber and you suck out all the air. But in that case, you're dead anyways. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to subscribe and hit the bell so that you can be notified when my latest videos out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.